Tommy, if I do say so myself, our cheap Jeep looks magnificent. Yeah, it looks really good. We did the lift, we did the tires, everything's all blacked out. Looks really good. Uh, and now it's time for the most important thing, which I think is tires and a lift. And I do want to thank our sponsors. <laughs> thanks to Terraflex, thanks to BFG. Much more off-road worthy, much better stance. Look at that. There's one thing we still have to do, of course, and that is take it to Moab and put it up against the Land Rover and the Suzuki. But how do we know if we've made it better and more off-road worthy? Well, we need to do some tests. I want to put it through our slip test, see how the four-wheel drive system works, and we need to take it up Goldmine Hill. That's coming up next. Okay, so let's get on with our testing here with our newly lifted and modified Jeep Wrangler. Now the first test we are going to do is called the slip test. The slip test is essentially where we get the vehicle stuck on purpose and we see if this Jeep can get itself unstuck. Our first test is gonna be with the back wheels. Okay, so first test, easy test for the Jeep Wrangler. We're gonna back onto the rollers in rear wheel drive, see if we get stuck, which we should. Then stick her in a four wheel drive and see if we can pull it off. Easy, well, in theory. Okay, so in a reverse, Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put it in neutral actually and let the vehicle settle. Make sure we're in the rollers completely. Now into drive, in rear wheel drive, we should be nice and stuck, let's see. We are nice and stuck. So let's go ahead and select four high. Part time is engaged on the dashboard here and now a little bit of gas. Four wheel drive working well, easy. Okay, so the first test was a total cakewalk for the Jeep Wrangler, but it does prove that the front axle engages and four wheel drive can pull us around. So four wheel drive is working well on this Jeep Wrangler, which is a good thing, especially if we're gonna go off road. The next test, not gonna be so easy. It's called the diagonal test. And with open differentials, it's gonna be a little tricky. All right, dude, it's time for a little bit of snow wheeling. Snow wheeling. What do you say? I mean, we're here at Goldmine Hill and we're gonna test our new off-road setup with the lift and the new tires by taking it up a snowy Goldmine Hill. Now, that's always a little dangerous. Let me show you why, because over here is one metal post and over here is another metal post. And sometimes in the past, with the wrong tires or the wrong snow conditions, the vehicle starts to slide back and, well, you either hit those two posts or we've almost taken out, I believe it was a TIG one, wasn't it? On this rock. So uh, we're always a little bit wary of going snow wheeling up Goldmine Hill. And of course, the question that I have, Tommy, is you know what? What? Are our new BFGs snow rated? Do they have the little snowflake? Let's find out. Because that means that there's no tires. These are the new BFG KO2s, and I'm looking for the little snowflake which tells me they're rated for snow. Looky there, MS. I think it's good. Now, the question, of course, is finally, do I drive up or do you drive up? What would you prefer? Well, you're the better uh, off roader in the family. Okay. So, you want to go up? Yeah, well, I'd love to. Okay, Goldmine Hill and our Wrangler. Now, Goldmine Hill would be no problem for this Wrangler if it was dry. It honestly probably wouldn't be much of a problem if it was snow covered, but it's pretty packed down and pretty slippery. So I'm gonna go into low range and then I'm gonna stop at stage two. So let's see how these tires hook up with open diffs. So far, so good. I'm in low range to maximize the available torque out of that little four cylinder. Four tiny squirrels doing their best to get up the hill. There we go. How was that? Easy, huh? Yeah, no problem. No problem whatsoever. Okay, second test. The front left wheel and the rear right wheel are going to be stuck in the rollers. This wouldn't be a problem in a more modern vehicle with traction control or even a locking differential. But with the open diffs on this Jeep, it's going to demonstrate a big problem. One we'll see at Goldmine Hill. Backing onto our diagonal test. 
Whoa. There we go. Into neutral. Let the vehicle settle. Seatbelt on so it doesn't chirp at me the whole time. Let's see. We're stuck. Well, that was weird. Why didn't we get stuck? Huh. It's doing really well. Well, that was a very surprising result. No slippage almost at all. Now this may have something to do with the slightly larger tires than most crossovers have in these small rollers, but really good result. Let's try the hardest test yet, the three wheel test. All right, stage two. The tricky part here is you lost all momentum. Yep. Now I gotta get around this turn. And it's wet. And it's wet and snowy. And the articulation here should be better with this lift. Stage two is rutted out. I don't have any lockers. I don't have any limited slip um, traction aids in this Jeep. I don't even have um, traction control, so, so it's gonna be tricky. Whenever you're ready. Yeah. Yeah, it gets tricky. I'm gonna have to go for it. up a little bit back up and come up here a little bit higher come at me more there you go. oh you almost had it uh so yeah so what you want to do is come straight at me higher and then make that turn okay so see if you can get some momentum see if you can make that turn hard turn okay now come straight at, at me not good. That's okay. I don't know why I listened to my dad. I should have just brought the Land Rover. Regardless, would have been a smart idea. You brought the door to a mine? I did. Seems like a bad idea. Right, let's put this under there. What about the nails sticking through it? Uh, they're only over there. The what door. the heck did you just find? Not a piece of gold mine. Try that. Okay. He made it. Wow. That was a little bit of tire burning. That was a little uh, sketchy, dude. Yeah, that was one way to do it. Now I gotta tell you, really good results on the two wheel slip test was not at all expecting the results. What typically happens with a vehicle with open diffs is the wheels on the rollers will just spin and spin and spin and you get stuck. But this one, almost no spinning at all. Maybe the tires are a little big for the rollers. I don't think that's the issue because it did get stuck in two wheel drive. So we did prove that the rollers do their job, but we're gonna try the three wheeled slip test. So both left wheels, and the front right are on the rollers. This one should get us nice and stuck. Only the rear right has traction. I'm in four high. Back her on. Okay, into neutral. Into drive. What the heck? Why is that working so well? Try it again. Into neutral. Into drive. Slowly apply some throttle. Oh, we're stuck now. A little bit more throttle. Yep. So definitely struggled more that time 
with the three wheel slip test as I thought it would. One last test we're gonna do today is the diagonal test on a hill. We're gonna back her up to one of these little loading ramps, put two wheels at a loss of traction, see if we can get up at all. So stage three is up here. It's this big rutted out section. We usually don't even try it at all in the snow, but it's got some traction here. But snow is a little softer. That's always good. You go up here, into the hole and out. Here comes Tommy. For stage number three, using momentum. Okay, here we go. I only got four cylinders, so I have to take a run at it. Well, apparently the hard part was stage, stage two. two, not stage three, because you made that look easy. Well, that would have been hard if we took it slow. Yeah. Okay, final test here is the ramp roller test. Now, I backed it up onto this pretty steep loading ramp. Makes it a lot more difficult to fake getting off the rollers by just throttling out of it. We'll see how it does this time. I'm not so certain. This is more similar to how Goldmine Hill really works. It's steep. You got gravity pulling you back down. If you have a traction loss situation, it makes it harder to overcome. So we'll give it one more shot here. Okay, here we go. Now I did put the vehicle into low range. Yeah, yeah. Shouldn't add any more traction, but we'll put a lot less strain on the drivetrain. So reverse, it's a little, a little tricky to stop on. Oh, there we go. Into drive. Okay, we're stuck. Let me try the old off-roaders trick by using the handbrake to distribute power to the wheel that's stuck. Nope. Helped a little bit, but not gonna get us off, I don't think. Let me just try a lot of throttle. Yeah, we're stuck for good. Handbrake trick, good effort, but didn't work. Really pulled hard on it too. All right, well there you have it. Gravity one, open diffs zero. There's no faking it on the TFL slip test on the ramp. The gravity just pulls you right down. The little Jeep though did well on the flat and clearly we made it up Goldmine Hill. So yeah, with a little bit of speed, a little bit of momentum, anything is possible. All right, Tommy. So I think we've got ourselves a good one. Well, uh, I mean, it would have been better with like a lunchbox locker or something. Yeah, but then it's not a cheap Jeep. Well, it could have been cheap Jeep. But anyways, for what we did for our first trial, I think it worked pretty well. I think you're previewing the second video series. Yeah. <laughs> the Cheap Jeep Challenge 2. Part two, two yep. Yeah, but this is just part one. And I think the Jeep did really well. You know, the slip tested well. Yeah, and the tires really hooked up well. We used our TerraFlex lifts, so thank you to BFG and TerraFlex. And I think we're ready for Moab because now the real fun begins because guys, we're gonna go do not bins and things, but Hell's Revenge. And we're gonna compare this Jeep to the Suzuki Samurai and to the Land Rover Disco 2. Yep. In Moab, that should be quite the epic adventure. Hey guys, it's been so cold here that We've had to charge up the battery in our cheap Jeep to keep those amps rolling. And today we've got a very special double feature for you because the question is, can you do a cheap Jeep on a TJ platform? And for a recent episode of Dude, I Love My Ride, we had Karsten bring in his TJ. And it's sort of the opposite of our TJ. Ours cost $6,500, his costs a little bit more, but he put a lot of bits and goodies on it to make it much more off-road worthy and much more capable. So sit back and relax, grab some hot chocolate, and watch this double feature of Dude, I Love My Ride. Welcome to Dude, I Love My Ride. This is different than Dude, I Love My New Ride. Here we profile owners of pretty cool rides, 
like Karsten, who just brought in his Jeep Wrangler TJ. So let's talk about this bad boy. Let's talk about your rig. What year is it? It's a 2005 Jeep Wrangler X um, with a four liter, obviously. Uh, originally came with Dana 35 and Dana 30 front. And you said you bought this bad boy in my hometown, Chicago, right? Yeah, it and was And there's a, no rust, which is crazy because every car in Chicago is rusted a bit. Yeah, no rust. Uh, it was a daily driver in Chicago, um, which was crazy. And the guy towed with it with 307 gear ratio as well, which was kind of crazy. Um, and a manual in downtown Chicago is kind of crazy as well, so. <laughs> so let's start with under the hood. You, you said you yeah, got, and you got the I can, you got I can actually open it. Up. Let's talk about this. Yeah, so there, there's a little latch, right? So the main thing that I was really upset with is that um, you can't lock a hood on a TJ. Yeah, of course. Um, or on any Jeep, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much any Jeep, obviously. So these are the Drake off road hooks. They're just like a little circle key, and then it just twists, pops out this. So it's like tab. a bike lock, right? One yeah. Of the, one of those, like, you know, the U, the U shape. Yeah, and then it's a Heim joint, so you can set it to whatever, whatever you want for height, so it won't rattle at, like, highway speeds and stuff like that. That's great. How much were these, and how hard were they to install? Um, not, they were kind of hard to install if, obviously, you have a TJ with rust, so uh, the hardware at least rusted on this uh, car, so. Yeah, these, these, these the, the usual clamps, right? They always rust on these things, Yeah, right? and they, so that was a little hard to get the bolt out of the bottom ones, but once they were off, it's a piece of cake to get it open. And you still have the... Uh, the same hook inside yeah. that pulls back. So I don't know if it's the same on your year, though. Uh, um, well, so the 2000, and, it's right there. Okay. The 2000, mine, goes, mine goes sideways, yours goes back. It's yeah, different. so 2003 is when they started changing up a lot of things on the TJ. And of course, this is uh, the engine that uh, is iconic, right? It's yeah. the four liter uh, straight six, uh, pretty much as bulletproof of an engine as you can ever have. Mm -hmm. Have you had any issues with it? Yes. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not that bulletproof. Um, so 2005, happened? 2006, yeah. uh, they changed the emissions. And so the OBD-A, the oil pump drive assembly is totally different. So right here, you have an actual full distributor that is a yep. little bit different than your TJ. Yep. Um, well, we've got the two fives. So and we'll the well, okay, even yeah. the 4.0 though, in that year yeah. at least, what happens is that the camshaft gear and the oil pump drive assembly gear shred each other. Okay. And so that by, uh, they actually had a recall on it and you were able to go to the factory and get a new camshaft put in. Um, but it's a very extensive process if you were to do it at like a dealership or somewhere else it would cost you a lot of money um, but i did it myself um, and it only cost me to really rebuild almost the entire engine without like a full rebuild of boring or anything like that just new gaskets and everything um about a thousand bucks so how much time uh about a week about a week so you know good amount of time and the whole front end comes off so you can access everything so easily so like taking the radiator and the front end off takes only like 30 minutes to really take it all off. And how many miles are on this? 115,000. And when you took the engine apart, was it in pretty good shape? I mean, how, oh, how much Oh, beautiful inside. Yeah, inside. There's nothing, no. nothing problem with it. It was just the camshaft gear was screwed up. And some of the other issues that, that these Wranglers have is rear main seal leaks. Did you have that? Had the rear main seal uh, drip, drip, kind okay. of, but not really a full on leak. Okay. Uh, but I replaced it while I was in there. Okay, so you might as so, well do yeah. it while you're down. And then I yeah. see you also added a and then uh, more free-flowing air intake. Yeah, which... Did it help? Um, well, so if you if you obviously know anything about cars, uh, it's a map uh, engine, so whatever you do to it, it's, not, it's just gonna recalibrate itself. So it's cool and all, it sounds good, yeah. but realistically, you're, uh, most people, and if you read on forums, you're better off sticking with the stock one because it has a higher intake hole, and so you won't get air or water into yeah, it. Yeah, you're water fording. Decreases yeah. as opposed to increases. Um, but I have a hydro shield, which you can see on there, and I've actually held a hose to it, and it won't suck any water into it at all. There's no water residue on the filter at all. All right, and how about the exhaust? Did you do anything to the exhaust? Yeah, so yeah. I've got a Banks um, Monster Flow exhaust. Okay. Um, mine was just rusted out. It was just it's right there. Yeah, all the piping was pretty much rusted, and like the um, actual muffler itself was just rusted. It just wasn't good. So I needed to replace that anyways. So I found a good deal. So, <laughs> so the catalytic converter is still there. Yeah, cat's that, still there. Uh, I think I believe there's two. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. And um, I noticed it still has Illinois plates. 
<laughs> Still is Illinois Because place. we have to do emissions here in Colorado. Uh, yeah, so I have to go take the emissions, um, but uh, it will be Colorado soon. All right, all right. Um, now, was it this color when you got it originally? Yeah, this okay. is the original paint color, um, yeah. Patriot Blue is yeah. what it's called. Uh, my mom had a Grand Wagoneer uh, that was this color, so I found this and just kind of wanted it. <laughs> of course, we always see this, right? This always starts yep. kind of this color, so yep. it's not bad. I've seen this actually get much, much worse on some of the older Jeeps. Yep. Same thing happens over here, right? You get rust and you get discoloration yep. on the door handle. So if anything, it's got surface yeah. at some places. How about the top original? Um, no, so no. this one didn't come with it. I think the um, X may have been just the, the X you either got. Well, no, you got to pick which one with the X. Okay. Um, the X was kind of the customizable version of it. Um, so you got either a soft top or a hard top. You got to either pick your manual or automatic. You also got to pick um, air conditioning at the time. So this does have air conditioning, um, but it came with a soft top originally. And then where did you get the hard top? Here in Colorado, actually. Yeah. How much was it? Uh, 1400 They're expensive. Yeah, and yeah. especially 2003 and up. Uh, I wanted to keep it with the year. Yeah. So if you see on years, you have vents those, here. Yep, yep. So the vents are for airflow inside and whatnot. But if you look on the back of um, a 2003 or an up, what you have is vents here instead. Uh, so what people do on the older ones, they'll stick this top yeah. on your one, yeah. slam the back and the windows blow out. Because you don't have a vent. Because you don't, you don't have, have a vent. Now, was this, did this originally come with the hardtop? Because then you would have had the wiring right for the... So, uh, Quadratech, yeah. 2003 and up, yeah. they have OEM wiring, which I've stuck then in there as So it well. didn't come, so you had, a, you had a wire. So I had to wire it myself. Was it yeah. hard or easy to do? Um, if you know basic wiring, no, yeah. it's pretty easy. Okay. And then I take it, um, did you also do the squirter? Yeah, so squirter all works. So if wow. you, you can see uh, right over here is all the wiring and the plug and everything and the hose for the squirter. Yeah, you did some You did some serious work to this. Yeah. Well, we're back here. Let, let's talk about the tire holder because this is always an issue. I kind of like the, this setup right here, right? Because usually the problem is you have the tire mounted to the tailgate and it's yep. much heavier, much bigger. You yep. end up breaking um, these hinges. Exactly. Uh, eventually. So what has your solution been? I kind of like how this works. I mean, you, just, you, you have the tailgate attached to the external tire holder, which is attached to the rear bumper. Yeah, so I didn't want a... Um, dual action. I didn't want the one where you have to open, open the first up, one then, and then yeah. open the tailgate. I wanted a single action one. So this uses a Heim joint um, to connect the tailgate to it, but all the weight is stuck on the actual and who, ma who makes Who makes the bumper slide? Um, Highline, H-Y-L-I-N then. Okay. It looks like a really nice and smart system. How much was it? How much is the bumper with um, it? This one cost me around 800 That's not bad. No. Usually, figure like just the bumper itself could be anywhere from four to six hundred. Yeah. So that's not that's not that bad. Uh, and then of course, let me close this. You've also um, I like this. My daily driver is a Civic. I also like the fact that you put some guards on the rear taillights. You've got your D rings right here. Yep. The tow hitch is incorporated. Um, probably helps increase the departure angle. Um, let's talk about underneath. So you swapped out the axles. Yeah, so underneath it came originally with the Dana 35, which is just known for being a Very terrible axle, axle. Yeah. Um, especially if you're going to run anything probably above a 33. So right now I'm probably in the safe zone and people would probably say, why did you do that? But I eventually will go bigger, obviously, if you, you, you want to go bigger, you always want to go bigger. And these are 33s? Yeah, so they're 33, 1250 uh, Goodyear okay. uh, MTRs. But so the bottom is a G2 um, Core 44. Um, it is the uh, Chromoly Axle uh, 35 Spline ARB uh, locker, so it's Good setup. pretty strong back there, and it definitely could have had even 37s probably. And have you taken it wheeling? Have you, have yes. you used it? Yeah. And how's it been? How's it do? Um, does phenomenal. Uh, so I've measured everything out exactly perfect to where I can disconnect the front and the rear, and nothing rubs. That's great. Yeah. Uh, bump steps are measured perfectly. Um, yeah, everything is... I mean, one of the great things about the TJ, and a lot of people look at TJs as being kind of the, 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 the most lovable of the Jeeps, right? Oh, yeah. Right? So, YJTJ, JKJL. Yep. 
Uh, and this is the one that kind of is like the golden retriever of the bunch. Yep. Like they're just the right size. Yeah. You know, they're just very lovable. Especially for Colorado, because we got tight trails around here too, and you can just scratch everything up so easily, and just it's hard to maneuver. And uh, did you put any lockers on it, or is it? Yeah, so it, the rear has, has the locker. Airb okay. locker. Okay, I wasn't uh, sure Front about is that. still an open differential. I'm still looking to do chrome ollies in the front and upgrade to a 35 spline from the 27, and do an Airb in the front. So then you'll be pretty much set. Set, yeah, to yeah. do like Carnage Canyon. <laughs> yeah, so my buddy and I, uh, we've done. Um, What's the hardest all thing you've over? Done? What's the one where you were like really white knuckled? Well, just because the fear of height was anything in um, Moab. Okay. Uh, so Hell's Revenge. Yeah. Was, yeah. Hell yeah. When you go up. It's that. just it's just yeah. nerve wracking. Um, but around here, uh, right when I saw your guys' video when you guys had the JK, I did. Literally right after that, I did it stock actually, which was terrible. But the T33 or T whatever the plane crash. Oh yeah, yeah, plane um, crash. Yeah. yeah, so I went up there and I did. That's a good I, one. I did it stock yeah. uh, with um, regular Goodyear Wrangler all season tires, uh, open differentials, and it it was terrifying. Um, but then I did it with this, and yeah, it's yeah, it's cake, easy. isn't it? So now I gotta obviously test my limits now. All right, all right. So let's talk about what else you've got here. Uh, you've got kind of this really interesting. Uh, well, it's it's a kind of exoskeleton, right? That yeah. lets you put up the big rack on the roof. Yeah. Uh, so, what's this, and how hard was it to put on? You've got external lights, of course. So tell me about this. It's the Smitty Built okay. um, XRC roof rack. Yep. Um, I didn't really find any roof rack that I liked that you were able to quickly take off the center section and roll down your soft top. Yeah. Um, and I needed it because I needed to put my snowboards on top because this is my snowboarding rig. Yep. Um, but right here, these are the worst bolts ever, obviously, on any TJ. Um, they're painted on and they have Loctite on them, so they're just very difficult. So it took me probably almost a month of tinkering just to get the screws out. So that was and, and definitely the, difficult. This one, of course, is the one that drops the... Yeah, right, that's the one that you yep. can tell and just drops the windshield. And I haven't dropped the windshield yet. <laughs> and I want to, but I, I, mean, I just haven't. It looks factory, dude. I mean, I love this. Uh, you've got a nice uh, Yeah, and that's annoying antenna. too. Is yeah. That gets whipped around on the trails yeah. in Colorado too. And you, of course, have the LED lights, which are blinding once you turn them on front and back. Yep. Yak them uh, rack up there with your shovel and actually a cool shovel. I love your high lift jack. This is a good place for it. Have you ever had to use it? Um, twice before yeah. any of this was on it. <laughs> okay. It was one of the first things I got. I got high centered and just needed to get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's good. I mean, this is a good place. You know, a lot of people put these, and we actually had a YJ where we had it on our hood. You know, they kind of mount them on the yeah, hood. Yeah, I think it's horrible. I'm always terrified of that. In an accident, yeah. I figure that thing's either going to go flying into the person you hit yep. or on the recall into your windshield, right? Yep. But there's, if you want, like a lot of people put the windshield all the way up to work on it. Yeah. So that was my, my main thing is I work under the hood. So how was I supposed to put a high life jack? and fold the windshield all the way up, it would just smash the windshield. All right. And what, what do you got over here? What, what are these these guys? Um, so if you know there's no space in a TJ. Uh, no, well, you can see how much space, <laughs> and that's not a lot. Um, so these are just Amazon special uh, right line bags, and it just has all of my uh, tow recovery gear in it and all that, and air down tools. And it was actually kind of funny. I bought these right before you guys did. Oh, you got those, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boulder tools, these yeah. are the little air down tools. Were you able to set them to the right mount? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. So I've got them all preset and okay. all that jazz too. And yeah, they're, they're fun. Yeah. The little packet and all that. Yes. Yeah, so, so what these, let's, let's show them. So what yeah. these guys do is when you're airing down, uh, basically you can set them to whatever you want, so you screw these onto the little valve, and then these are set to, let's say, what do you set? What do you set? I got mine 15. So these are set to 15 pounds, and then it just automatically airs down to 15 pounds, and makes it a lot easier than sticking a key or something on that little valve and trying to get it through work, right? Yeah. It's a nice little, it's a nice little, and do you have onboard air? Yes, yeah, so uh, if you looked in the front, yeah. um, for the locker in the rear, you need it. Yeah. Um, so onboard air. There it is. And quick connect to air up and air down tires. And that little guy do, does front and rear locker and it'll air up a tire this from 15 to almost 30. How quick? I don't know, like a minute. That's great. Because yeah. some, some the, you know, you're there for like I'm not in minutes. a rush either when I'm on the trail. Like I'm but just saying out. Like. 15 minutes per tire. <laughs> yeah. That's an hour. Um, so let's talk about your winch, Warren Xeon. No, so. It's it, not a Warren, it says Xeon. Yeah, so it was the only cover <laughs> okay. that would fit when you put the control box in the center. Uh -huh. 
So it's, yeah, the cheap Chinese knockoff of uh, yeah. Warren, at least. Yeah, you don't have the uh, <laughs> synthetic cable there, I noticed. I don't have the synthetic, it can't, I, so I got this as a floor model special for uh -huh. only 200 bucks. Yeah, well, so I was like, I mean, right, a Warren cool. Zian is what, twelve hundred dollars? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not cheap. Uh, so, how about these lights? Are these? Uh, they're factory. They're factory. Um, so okay. this is the OEM fog light that you would get, which you guys talked about your TJ yeah. you wanting. These w would have what came as the OEM fog light. And I'm betting um, that they put out very little light compared to the LEDs. Um, they're not too bad once you change the bulb in it. Okay. So I changed the bulb in it and it's a nice white or bright, kind of what you guys did to your lights at least. But then the OEM cap just goes right over the screw. And then and I, the noticed, I noticed around. that you blacked out the, the chrome ring around No, here. those are purchased as well. Okay, so People you purchased those rings. <laughs> and t t t talk to me about these lights because the, the original lights are horrendous. Yeah, so the, the yeah, they're candles. Yeah, uh, exactly. The absolute candles. Um, so those are the 8700 series from JW Speaker. Um, they're pricey for sure. Um, but they will, they, pardon? Are they 300? No, I got them on sale really? for five. <laughs> oh, for five yeah. Huh? Wow. <laughs> um, so, and that's for the pair yeah. at least, but um, changes it to almost a brand new modern car. So let's, let, let's talk about numbers. I mean, how much was the TG when you bought it? I bought it for 1100. Or not, sorry. 11,000. 11,500. Like, sorry. Yeah, that's terrible. 11,500. If sorry. you got it for 1,100, <laughs> I'd be like so jealous. Yeah. And then how um, much money do you think you have into it? I, I bet you've got at least that. I'm looking at all the... Um, Yeah. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with the, with my the axles. my parents don't see that. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't pass around this video. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say I have probably about 10,000 into it easily. Yeah. Um, but my main thing was I had... I was going to spend 20. No matter what, I will, so I would have spent that on a JK from the get-go. Look, the cheapest and, JK yeah. you're going to get is a Sport, and if you find one, which is hard to find, it's going to be, what, 25000 yep. if they're still around, if, if there's still yep. some. And a new JL is going to be probably 26, 27, mm -hmm. and that's not going to get you anywhere near the amount of off-road capability you have, right? You're going to have open diffs, you're going to have tiny wheels, yep. you're going to have a basic interior. It's going to be, you know, a pretty much great snow vehicle, but mm -hmm. if you want to take it off-roading, you know, this you can take off-roading and do some serious stuff. A base Sport Wrangler, you probably have to start putting some money into it. Mm -hmm. Any, anything on the inside that you did? Yeah, so, let's look, yeah, let's look um, so I put the factory wiring back in, so I've got the um, defroster, the windshield, and if you press down the windshield further, it shoots out the sprayer then. Oh, that's great. Um, so OEM back there. Then the front lights is the the middle-ish to the right, and then the back ones. Yeah, right they say it two on there, front and rear yeah. uh, spots. Um, new radio, obviously. Yeah. The, and then another thing too, in a TJ, you never have like a center console that you can like put that's anything nice, in. That's a nice touch. Yeah, the only thing I didn't like was it said drive-by design. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. And then yeah. you've got these grips as well. Yeah, so I saw you guys buy the same ones yeah. that I bought for the back. They start to wear out and they're not the best. So these actually bolt to the roll cage. But if you have a 2003 and uh, newer, yeah. you have to measure for the drill point of the trim. Okay. But they're solid. You can shake the whole car with it. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. And how is the five speed been? It's not five, so it's actually a six. So 2003 okay. to... Um, Got the six the, speed. So to 2003 to the current one yep. is the exact same transmission, the NSG370. Um, great transmission, yeah. So no problems with no it. Problems. No problems with the bigger wheels and tires. No, no, All right. it moves it great. All right, and I think we're, you know, kind of talked about. You've got some steelies, obviously, right on there, painted black, which look really yeah, bad. Yeah, so I was gonna go alloy rims, yeah. but. I, just cheaper and yeah. easier to stick and, and, to the seal. And who's the lift? How big? And um, the lift? So the lift is kind of like a combination of things. It's uh, upper and lower control arms are JKS um, with their Johnny joint on one end and the regular bushing on the other. And then their two inch um, dual rate spring. And then it's got a three and three uh, quarter inch um, isolator on top. So it's two and three quarters. Um, and then the shocks are a two inch shock, but have, if you don't TJ's, the rear bar pin and the front bar pin are terrible. So I have bar pin eliminators in there that raise in an inch. So it kind of evens everything out then eventually. So doing the math on it. <laughs> so let's talk about kind of lessons learned. I mean, you've done 
close this. You've done probably probably as much as anybody has to their to their uh, TJ. What are some of the important lessons that you learned going through this process that you want to share with our viewers? What what would you do over <laughs> and what wouldn't you do over? Like what was the you know what was the one thing that that you think gave it the most? You know, if, if you were doing a one to ten upgrades, what would be number one and what would be number ten? Um, I would say. That, it's tough to think of what I would say just start with the lift I don't know sure. or you get more height it's just because I started with tires yeah and then I eventually had to sell those tires and go with these then lesson and, learned right yeah so that's the first lesson learned um, do your research like crazy do your research just read every forum possible like I did so if you look at the entire Jeep it's all bolt-on I didn't want anything of cutting, welding, stripping of anything. Yeah, so I mean, even the fenders, right? Yeah, even my rock sliders, though. Okay. They go into the subframe portion and lock in that way, and then there's a little hole on the TJ that lets you lock in there. Um, so if you de defer which route you want to go, I guess. Like, don't just start cutting things, because if you want to go back, you, you can't uncut. You can't uncut. At least so, usually you can't uncut. Um, yeah. I guess long arm, maybe. Yeah. In, if, instead of a short arm just because of ride quality but to be honest it's 33s that you're not going to have bad ride quality at 33s anything bigger than that maybe and what was what was like the biggest mistake you made in this process the one where you think of gosh i wish i'd known that it's a good question it's a really good question um i did i did my research like crazy so i didn't really pick something i didn't really want um, I, I searched for months before I would purchase something. Um, okay, let's go the other way. What was what was the thing you're the happiest about? The happiest about is um, I don't know my bumpers. I really love my bumpers. The ARB. Um, yeah. Uh, th so that's something. I guess there you go. There's something that possibly could be bad. Is I've heard ARB bumpers crush very easily, comparison to other bumpers. So maybe I. I mean I don't knock on wood plan on getting an accident, but. Uh, that's possibly going with a stronger one maybe, but uh, possibly going with synthetic instead of steel first from the get-go. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with my bumpers, I'm really happy with the lift. Um, measure, something to think about, measure. And how about fuel economy? What kind of fuel economy are you getting? Um, I, I drive it really conservatively. Mm. Um, like I'm never above 2500 RPM really. Um, so I'd say 15. Yeah, that's not bad. No. Yeah, I think I think our 2.5 is actually getting worse fuel economy now because that engine's working so hard. Well, you also put bigger tires, tires on. on. So I was getting worse. I had 307 gear ratio with 31s, and I was getting like 12 or something. And then I put 410 gears in, and I got better gas mileage. You know, so. it's always right. It's always a compromise. The, you, you start down this road, and the Jeep. The TJ especially is relatively comfortable off-road mm -hmm. um, and relatively comfortable on-road but the more off-road worthy you make it the less on-road <laughs> comfortable yeah, you, yeah, you make it yeah. so at some point uh, you know the, the more you build it out the more it becomes specific to the off-road world as yeah. opposed to the on-road world but it seems like you've struck a good balance here you know I, I've yeah. seen a lot of Jeeps and at some point they get to be crazy enough where you have to tow them to the trail mm -hmm. but this one seems like you know you could drive it to work and you could drive it to the trail, and then you could, you know, lock stuff up and go do Hell's Revenge, and exactly. then drive it back home, which yeah. is a great compromise. And that's yeah, that's exactly what I did. I drove there, dr drove it on Hell's Revenge, put all the trails there, and drove it all back. All right, last uh, question: uh, What's up? What's next? What's next for this bad boy? Are you done with it? You start You're never again. done. <laughs> that's the problem. Like uh, I just watched a video actually. Um, Gail Banks yeah. made a remark: There is no 12-step process. You're hooked. You're, the, if you're into Jeeps, you're, you're done for life. I mean, um, so uh, bigger, obviously, which bigger then taller. you get to the point of not going, uh, driving it to the trail. You can't drive it around town. So I would say super, for right. You need a supercharger because. Well, know. so that's what actually um, my next thing. I've been really, really into doing the um, Cummings R 2.8 swap. Oh, yeah. I really yeah. want to do a uh, diesel swap on this, and I, um, I definitely think that's possibly next. Um, if not, um, shout out for my 
next door neighbor Tom Stem, he's the one who would probably throw a Hemi in here. Yeah. He's Mopar, so um, Hemi is a possibility too, but that fuel economy on a diesel would be just phenomenal. The turbo going up the mountains, no lag. I mean, it would just turn this into a I think when this, when this came out, it had something like, I want to say like 180 horsepower in that neighborhood, right? The straight six, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is fine, you know, when you've got small wheels and no lift. Mm -hmm. uh, as you start to get bigger, the problem we have, of course, with the 2.5 is that it's just not powerful enough. So we could only go so big, exactly. right? Exactly. You start running out of horsepower. Um, That's why I searched specifically for a four liter. Yeah. And I knew I was going to most likely take the axles out so I didn't care if it was a Sahara or whatever. I didn't care about the... I wanted the interior to be nice, yeah. but I actually don't really like the Sahara interior. I'm not really a big fan of it. Yeah, and so this is kind of the, the one that everybody wants, right? They want the 4 liter with yep. the 6 speed. Yep. Then you've got the best of both worlds. Exactly. Uh, On the highway, 410 gear ratio, 33s, rocking maybe 20, 200 RPM to 2500 RPM. It's quiet enough. Even with the exhaust too, there's no drive. Do you, ha do you have enough power when you're going up I-70, that Floyd Hill, that first yeah. part where you're keeping up with So traffic? here's the thing, uh, it wasn't, and people might hate me for doing it, but I was rocking fourth gear, 75 miles an hour, loaded up, going up the Eisenhower. It overheated on me, but then I waited like 30 minutes, drove it home been fine ever since. Yeah, that's another thing about the four liters, especially not in this one, but the XJ, right? The Cherokees, they tend to overheat. Here you have a lot more room under the hood, so there's airflow. Yeah. If you have a Cherokee, that's probably the number one issue that everybody has with the four liters, yeah. is overheat. So yeah, um, really nice rig. Really want to thank you yeah, thank for bringing you. it in. Hey, if guys have any questions, when we put up this video, will you answer them? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and if you guys want to bring in your vehicle, if you're in the Denver, Boulder area, uh, to feature on Dude, I Love My Ride, we love to learn all about these rigs because then if you're out there building up your dream TJJK JL, we can help you along in the process. As always, this is Roman and Karsten saying thanks for joining us, and remember, check out TFLcar.com for more news views and of course, crazy Jeep TJ reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.